to his. So it's not like, okay, um, we'll, we'll, I'll, we'll stay betrothed, but I'm still, it was either all in or all out. There was no kind of half in, half out, but I think a lot of times that's how we treat God, right? God says, I need you to trust me in this. I need you to take this step of faith. And we're kind of like one toe in, one toe out. I'm going to kind of see how things go before I, I fully trust. And that's not trusting at all. There's no half faith with God. It's, it's all in or it's nothing. And he, and he takes Mary into his house as his wife. What kind, of, what kind of trust did that take? Every time they went out in public, she was visibly pregnant. People start doing the math. I've only been married a week. What's going on here? The whispering. How much do you think they were treated as outcasts in, in their own hometown? But yet, he responded in the only way that would be found to be pleasing to God. In faith. It says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is. And that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. I, I, I love that because it almost sounds like it's an incomplete thought here. Like the writer of Hebrews says, you know what? Without faith it is imp impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is. And then he moves on to a next thought. Kind of ask her, so must believe that he is what? That he is who? That he what what am I believing that he is? But in the vagueness of that comes the beauty in that. Because what he's asking is to believe that he is. He is what? Yes. He is everything. That he, he exists outside of everything. You must believe that he is. And it's kind of like the, the, the Holy Spirit was writing there. And you get to the point where it's like there's no English word to describe what we must believe that he is. Because it, it's everything, right? We must just believe that he is. That's why when, when Moses asked the Lord, you know, whom shall I say sent me? Should I just say the, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and, and Isaac and, and Jacob? He says, no, tell him. I am sent you. Describes the totality of God, that He is who He is. We must believe that He is and that He is the rewarder of those who seek Him. For Joseph, he had to believe that, that God was so big, God that was so huge that His virgin wife could be pregnant because of the Holy Spirit. See, the only kind of faith that is pleasing to God is faith that leads to obedience. He believed Him, and then He did. He did as the angel of the Lord had commanded Him. Right? There was no room for Him to say, yes, I, I, I believe that, but I'm not going to do anything about it. I, I believe that, and I'm just going to kind of keep things status quo here for a while. True faith in God. When we believe that He is, it's nothing for us to go and do. James says it this way, James chapter 2, beginning verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. But someone may well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works and I will show you my, or I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one? You do well. The demons also believe and, and shudder. 
But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? The kind of faith that is pleasing to God. It's that kind of faith that puts, puts our feet, that puts our hands where our heart is. One last verse, Acts chapter 8. Beginning verse 36. Different way to kind of look at this faith and works thing. Philip was led to the the road that goes to the desert on the way back to, to Ethiopia. And God has an, an appointment, divine appointment there for him to meet this Ethiopian eunuch who had purchased, or most likely purchased in Jerusalem, um, the book of Isaiah. And he was reading it. And they have this, this conversation. Um, Philip asks him if he understands what he's reading. He says, how, how can I understand unless someone shows him and shows him that, that who Isaiah was speaking of was the Lord Jesus Christ. We get there to verse 36. And as they went along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And baptize, being baptized is, it would be, would be a, a work, right? Um, something that we, we do. And he says, What prevents me from, from being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. So the only thing that prevented him from, from being was, was faith. So the faith had to be there before the work or before the act. He says, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and he says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop. And they both went down to the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. Theology of Christmas. We believe in the virgin birth. If you don't believe that Jesus was, was fully God and fully man, you, you have nothing else to hang your spiritual hat on. You're just kind of out there on your own. You have to deny everything that Jesus did. You have to deny everything that Jesus said. We believe in Christ alone. God doesn't say, call His name Jesus, because He's going to be another way of salvation for His people. He's it. We believe in faith and obedience. Again, we ask ourselves, that question this time of year. Okay, where, where do I stand? Where, where am I at? See, you can believe in the existence of Jesus. Man, that's no, that's no great thing. Every time you write the date, you are confirming the existence of, of Jesus. James said the demons even believe and they shudder. They, they, they have a, an external fear of Christ but when does it become personal it becomes personal when you believe that Jesus came to save his people from their sins and you were one of his people not because you're a good person, lots of not good people in Jesus' lineage there. Not because you, you, know, you were in the right spiritual family. Not because you grew up in church. Not even because you grew up in this church. But because you know that, that Jesus loves you. And He willingly came to not just be born, but to die. 
that goes all the way back to what God told Adam and Eve. He says that the moment and the instance that you take of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will die. It was the only sin they could have committed. And they did. And the price, the penalty, was death. That's what we all deserve. The moment that we sin. The only reason that God doesn't take us out of, you know, out of here the moment that we commit our first sin is because of Jesus. He loves you that much. So do you know this morning that Jesus came to save you from your sin? You would say, Aaron, I'm not a bad person. I didn't say, came to save bad people from their sins. We looked at last week. God says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you've ever done anything, said anything, thought anything, that had an aim other than ultimately bringing 100% of glory to God, then you've sinned. So we all need salvation from our sins. I pray this morning if if you've never made that commitment, you say, "Well, you know, I've I've done this or I've done that," or but I just don't know. Well, the God gives us the measurement of that. True saving faith will always be followed by obedience. God begins to change the way we think, the way we respond. We begin trusting God with things that we thought were impossible before. Because we are a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. So I hope this morning, more than just a theology lesson through the birth story of Christ, You've heard a love story. That God loves you. And He's done all this to prove that love to you. And He sealed it. By not just dying on a cross, but by raising again in three days. That's the proof text. That's how God says, you know. This morning, would you trust Jesus is the salvation of your soul. The only way to have our sins washed and forgiven. Maybe we're here this morning and we just, man, we needed that reminder. It's in Christ alone. Christ alone that we are saved. Christ alone that we come to the presence of God. For us who are, are Christians, that that is just a, a, a call to worship. Maybe this morning we just need to come to that place of worship. Or maybe it's that reminder of faith and obedience. Am I giving God the kind of faith He deserves? I'm going to pray and we're going to have a time of invitation. Maybe this morning needs to be that time that you receive that gift of of salvation. You can come and pray by yourself. You can pray where you're at. You can grab someone and say, hey, I want you to pray with me. I'll be here in the front. I will pray with you. I would love to do that. Maybe the greatest gift that we need to open this morning is knowing that I am His people. He came to save me from my sins. Maybe we're here this morning and maybe the obedience just hasn't been where it should be. Maybe this morning we need to ask ourselves the question of the Ethiopian eunuch. What prevents me from being baptized? 
What prevents me from going and sharing my faith? What, what prevents me from doing evangelism? What, what, what prevents me from... God says it's your faith. Maybe this morning we just, we need that gift of, of greater faith. Let's go to the Lord and pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I pray that, uh, Lord, I, I pray that you've given us a, a, a fresh vision this morning, a fresh look. Yes, at your birth, but, Lord, more importantly, at what you came to accomplish. Lord, you came to, to, declare, to declare those who were unrighteous as righteous. You came to declare those who were unjust as just. Lord, you came to declare those who are sinners as saints. Lord, I pray that wherever we are at this morning in our faith journey, Lord, you would give us the confidence, the boldness, the courage to take that next step because there's always a next step. Lord, I pray that you would use this invitation, Lord, to convict us and conform us Yeah, we know Jesus was born in a manger over 2,000 years ago. But what is He doing in our lives right now? Because His work has not stopped. Lord, I pray and lift up this time of invitation. Use it according to Your sovereign plan and Your sovereign will. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.